Hey guys, Desolator Magic here, and you constantly hear bad things about the pro level of play from, well, the pro players and uh, media coverage, me included, obviously, and anybody else who's on Wizards Naughty List and likes to tell the truth. But you never really hear that much bad about it from the actual organizers. I know Channel Fireball had some very snarky things to say about Wizards a couple times this year, and I think they very much merited it. I mean, what they did was ridiculous. I mean, you had the trophy situation, you had the camera situation where they found out at the actual event that Wizards was no longer going to livestream them at all. Or, pardon me, it was after the event. They found out after the event that the cameras never showed up because the cameras aren't showing up. Then they had issues with attendance and losing money, then the artist stuff, I mean, and they've been polite about it, like, relatively, but, well, let's just say uh, JustPlayGames.uk, aka Just Play, um, they've got some words to say about an event that they ran. Um, this is a mythic qualifier, which is, you know, not a magic fest, but it's also huge. So I consider anything that isn't FNM, like anything bigger and higher up than that to be pretty much pro level because you're either qualifying for a big tournament or it just is a big tournament. And it could be like a little side tournament. It could be not an official magic fest, but you know, a lot of people, they do conventions like gaming conventions and they'll hold a giant magic tournament. I would consider that pro level play too. Or I should say, it's not casual if there's a respectable amount of prizes on, on the line. I think the, the level of deck and the level of play, the friendliness and the seriousness, has a lot to do with how much money is on the line. And while this was a Mythic Championship qualifier, so I mean, the prize is you get to go to the Mythic Championship or whatever. I don't know how many layers there are now. So I'm going to read this in its entirety. Uh, this was posted August 1st by Ian O'Brien from uh, Let's Play, uh, aka Let's Play Games in the UK. Uh, it's just titled Mythic Qualifier Update, and it says, Hi, Magic players. As you may have heard, the Mythic Qualifier weekend that we are running on the 3rd and 4th of August has suffered from extremely poor ticket sales. It's pretty difficult to put our fingers on exactly why this was, but let me give you some background for context. When we were first introduced to the idea of Mythic Qualifiers, the uh, steer that we were given... By the way, this guy speaks like British English... So I don't know what he means by the steer that we were given, but whatever, can be summed up as Wizards wanting these events to feel like a mini Magic Fest. Uh, they had a 226 player cap, which we thought to be a sure sellout. We were invited to tender our proposition for the event. <laughs> I don't know what that means. Anyway, uh, so we set about figuring out what we could do to make an event that was essentially a modern era PTQ feel like something special. And I mean, I'm, I'm one to call stuff what it is. It pretty much is just a PTQ, which is a Pro Tour qualifier. It's just they call it something different now and it works a little different. And if I'm not mistaken, they have run PTQs in the past. So they're just like, okay, well, let's do that. We chose a great venue. We contacted a couple of singles traders. We organized side events. And most of all, we looked at a level of entry fee plus prizes that would make the event feel like there was something real to be won. The upshot of all this was a 55, I don't know if that's euro or pound. I think that's pound, but I thought they used euros. <laughs> Not for long. So I don't know, 55 British outer space dollars uh, entry fee with a flight, which I don't believe means you're getting on an airplane because I mean, that'd be cheap even for England. I forgot what flight means. I think it's like the, the how many wins and losses you need to get to what, and like whether it's double elimination or single or Swiss or... Or maybe it's the prize pool, which would be like the take or the... I, I don't even remember the American word for it. So anyway, I assume that's what he means. So he says, uh, 55 whatever the hell entry fee with a flight and cases of magic boosters plus more boosters for high finishing records. Oh, maybe they're literally giving away a flight, like the, like the actual flight to the Mythic Championship, like the, like a plane ticket. I don't know, flight means something else in the context of a tournament, so I, I have no idea what he's saying. Whatever, not important. We were pretty unsure of this level of entry fee as it was high, but in order to offer the levels of prize support that we felt we had to, this was where the entry fee needed to settle. Now let me just say, 55 is about right. I mean, it all depends on like how expensive the city is as far as like doing events like this in America, and you know the prize is what's on the line, that kind of stuff. But I don't think fifty-five pounds or whatever is really that high. Like I think a hundred would be high. But remember, people like make a weekend out of it. It's like kind of like a vacation, aka a holiday out over there. And you know, you got the hotel, you got the travel. You're probably split into four ways with your friends, and you know, you run around spending money at all the booths and stuff. I mean, it's not quite a convention. It, it's very scaled down, but still, I think fifty-fives acceptable i mean could i see it being 30 yeah but you know whatever like they said it all went to prizes 
So the break-even point on this event was very high. So in other words, yeah, the income went to prizes and expenses. And we weren't even sure we would hit it. As it happens, the events around the country were not as successful as Wizards expected them to be. Shocker. Uh, while Spain, Italy, and other bastions of magic, really, uh, to whose standards we are regularly held, sold out multiple events, the UK was running in the plus or minus 150 bracket. Uh, we made some money on the first event, about 50 to 100 pounds profit, ouch, and we didn't account for staff meals and drinks during the day in there, so we overall probably lost some. Uh, on a 120 odd man magic tournament with a 55 pound entry fee. And let me just say, like, the venue is the expense. That's hundreds to thousands. We took player feedback from that tournament. Uh, it was, from the players who were there, overwhelmingly positive. But still, there was a feeling that the price was a little too high from a lot of corners. Uh, that left us in a tough position. Less entry fee equals less prizes equals less attractive event. It felt like a lose-lose situation. Then we were asked if we wanted to run another event. This time it was to be modern, the UK's favorite format. I'm learning all kinds of stuff from this article. <laughs> Uh, we figured this would be a good chance to try again. We spoke to multiple competitive modern playgroups across the UK, solicited feedback on prizes. Uh, people didn't want boosters. Cash came up a bunch of times. We rolled with that and even ran the exact prize structure uh, past a few people who told us that they thought it was great. They told us they'd love to play. We reduced the entry fee down to forty-seven fifty for early bird. We added a higher percentage of that as prize pool than we did for our first event. See, that's not smart. Uh, our break-even point went up again, but with 120-odd players for standard, we figured this would be fine for modern. Our expectations seemed reasonable. We sold less than 80 tickets across two events. Two events, guys. I've had more people than that at one pre-release. In fact, I think we've had more than that at a hybrid uh, double FNM at my old LGS. That's where you run FNM as modern and standard simultaneously as two separate tournaments on the same day as the same thing. So yeah, from uh, like a, a people who know what they're doing, who have like a known marketing mailing list, social media following, past players in a more popular format, 80 between two events is unreal. That's terrible. So they say, let that sink in for a second. The UK's most popular competitive format, a format that we all were worried was going to have support dropped a couple years ago, remember that, uh, has finally gotten big competitive events back that the community has been asking for since PTQs were abolished and it sold 80 tickets. We didn't see it coming. Nobody did. And honestly, I don't really know what to say about it. Maybe we've done something wrong with this event that I can't figure out. But remember, they gave out player surveys and said, how'd you like the event? Like, how can we improve? And people are like, no, this was great. You know, the price is okay. You know, people like them. They, they've been known with a reputation of running events that are good. People had no reason that I can see and that they can see to not show up. Now, I don't know what the weather was like. I don't know, you know, what the venue was like, if that is a reputation, if it's a long way to drive. I don't know any of that, but it sounds like they've ran, you know, at the same venue, similar events before and had not a real big problem. So... What changed? What the heck is going on? So he goes on to say, maybe the price being similar to a GP just makes the event unpalatable, but GPs have an economy of scale that we could never match. Remember, GPs have like thousands, I'm pretty sure, like 1,500 people or something. Uh, and then they charge the, the booth operators like thousands to pay for the venue. Uh, anyway, maybe we should have run it cheaper and with much reduced prizes. Is Liverpool an <laughs> unattractive location? Oh, I could say something there, but I'm not gonna. Uh, because people feel that it's difficult to get to? Are there too many events in the calendar? Is it too close to a GP? Let me add one. Is Wizards driving away people left and right by constantly putting their foot in their mouth, saying stupid shit on social media and ruining the community? Is Modern still a mismanaged pile of garbage? Anyway, please tell us and please tell Wizards. I'd like to know what it is about this event that made you decide that it wasn't for you. If premium-priced small-scale events are too expensive for what they offer, in your opinion, then it would be valuable for Wizards of the Coast to lower their expectations around these events being a mini Magic Fest. So it sounds like they're kind of pissed that Wizards said, well, here's the cap and here's how many you should have, or whatever. Uh, because mini Magic Fest costs money. If you would rather see them be cheap qualifiers, then make your voice heard. Or if it's something else, say that too. We will make sure the feedback makes it to them. So here's where it gets crazy. 
In the meantime, clearly this event can't go ahead in the form in which it was planned. I mean, yeah, they'd lose like a thousand pounds. Uh, we'd hoped that with ticket sales closing on a payday, so probably Friday, we might have a big last minute rush. It's absolutely not unheard of for that to happen, but it didn't. So players, oh boy, this is where this, this is what's pissing people off. So players who have registered have received an email with revised event times and expectations. We'll be dropping the prize support, refunding 50% of everybody's tickets, and the events will likely be five to six rounds. Anybody who wants a full refund will get one, along with an offer of compensation in the form of heavily discounted magic products, which we hope will go uh, some way to offsetting any out-of-pocket expenses. Oh, boy, I mean, going there, getting a partial refund, and then also... I mean, reduced prize support, it's like whatever, but then less rounds, so it's maybe easier to win, but then it's like easier for everybody to win, so I don't know, it's like higher variance. I don't know which way you'd really go with that at the end of the day. Um, and then the opportunity to, while you're there, buy basically probably at-cost magic boosters from any set legal in standard, probably. I mean, that's not bad. You, you can't even do that on the internet because you got to pay, you know, 12% eBay fees and shipping. So I think, like, that's the best way they could have handled this, but damn, I mean, changing something after people already paid for it because otherwise you're going to lose, like, a thousand uh, pounds. That, that's unreal. So they close with, we apologize for all of this. We're sorry. We're a small business, and we're not in this industry because we're here to make our millions. We're here because we love what we do, and we're excited to run big events like this because they are cool and we love magic. We weren't able to do that this time around, and it's genuinely saddening and absolutely embarrassing. Hopefully, the other Mythic qualifiers this season do better than we did. Please support them if you care about these events being available and want to see them continue. Wow, what a way to close that. That really pisses me off, and I don't mean I'm mad at them. I haven't heard any comments about this. In fact, there's literally no comments on the actual post. This announcement has 385 likes on Facebook. So, I mean, that, that's more people than signed up for the event. So people still like them. And, you know, they're, they're handling this very civilly. I think they're making the best out of what they can do. And the last two paragraphs are, like, heartbreaking. I mean, that's unbelievable. But who do you blame? Is it just, is it like they said, some kind of thing about travel? Or is it too close to something else? I mean, they wouldn't have been dumb enough to put it on, like, a holiday or when everybody's out doing something else. I mean, I think they know what they're doing. But I have to say, something probably in all likelihood out of their control causes. So, is it the toxicity of the highly competitive modern players? Is it, I mean, it was too recent to be like, oh, that one deck is taking over, the Quarks, whatever, they uh, shut that down months ago. Uh, I don't follow the modern meta, so I don't know if there's something new ruining it, and that's why people didn't show up, because nobody wanted to play with it. Is modern changing too much, where people just literally don't have the decks? And they know if they play with an old one, they will lose. Like, something that's been a classic tier one for, like, years and now just isn't. And so people just literally don't have a grand to drop on, you know, a good deck. Or is it Wizards' fault? I mean, w Wizards has been doing such stupid crap, mostly in the context of standard, but also just PR, image, and social media, of course. I'd like to think that they were the biggest factor in driving people away from this tournament. And, I mean, the big beef that kept coming up that uh, Ian kept saying in this article is... Wizards kept telling us that we should put the cap at 226 for events like this, like the first one, the standard one. So then they thought, well, 226 or more should show up for the next one. I think they said, well, 120 sold in the first, in the standard one, which was low, but they thought, well, modern's more popular. But yeah, Wizards has like the DCI logins and all the tournament stats. They should know how many people are willing to show up to a tournament. And if they see a giant downward decline, they should warn people. Like, I think that's where this guy's getting at. Because he mentioned it multiple times that he's kind of not saying, Wizards, this is all your fault. But he's kind of mentioning, maybe you shouldn't be telling us, you know, 226 if you know it's going to be 80, you know? But okay, they could rely on their own past numbers, but it sounds like they haven't been like running tournaments for 15 years straight and they know exactly what to expect. It sounds like... uh Honestly, that uh, first one they mentioned was, well, for sure the first um, Mythic qualifier they've ever ran, but I think it sounds like they've ran a couple PTQs in the past, and maybe not, like, real recently. So if, you know, competitive modern just lost half their players, it would have been nice if Wizards would have tipped them off when they said, hey, we're running a giant tournament. You know, they should have said, hey, FYI, you might want to downscale everything because Magic's dying. And I do think the company's legitimately driving players away. I think so. I think Modern Horizons was a joke. It's just stupid. And uh, 
it's it's just a terrible product. They didn't give anybody the reprints that they needed because there was almost none in it. The lands are astronomical and the meta keeps changing. So to build a new deck, you need the lands and lands cost double what they did when uh, master sets were out. So all around, they're making it harder, they're pissing off modern players, and they're just generally driving people away from the game with their stupid decisions. And then, I know you can't play modern on Arena, but MTGO is still a thing, so I think between the two, you're kind of still stealing players from it. So I do feel like, in small parts, but multiple small parts, Wizards was responsible, enough that, oh boy, I mean, it, it just sounds like Ian O'Brien, who wrote this, like, Everything they could have done, they did right. As far as you know, everybody's happy, but for some reason people didn't show up, and what's what's left? What is the answer? It does not sound like, and I do not believe that it's anything they did. I think it's how hard Wizards and their idiot moderators have cracked down on the Twitch chats uh, and made it subscriber only. I think it's how they've not streamed GPs at all, so now people care a lot less about the pro scene. I think it's the mismanagement of the modern ban list. I think it's that Modern Horizon sucked, like I said. It's all their stupid, careless actions, and then not informing them, hey, if you're going to hold this, just FYI, there's a big downward trend in the UK. All of that would have been nice, so this this sucks. And now remember, if you think this is an anomaly, and may maybe it is something that you know nobody's thinking of, or maybe Ian's covering for himself or whatever, um, attendance at British, especially... Uh, Magic Fest or any kind of big tournaments, they're all down. I mean, Magic Fest everywhere, aka Grand Prix is basically what they are. Attendance is way down. I mean, even ask like Channel Fireball. I think even Star City Games said that they're down a little bit. So people are leaving. It's a worldwide trend. What's behind it? it it's got to be Wizards. That's why I'm not going to dump 100% of the blame on them, but it's like, this is the effect. This is what you get. A, a small store trying to do big things because they can and they've done it in the past. And then they get financially screwed over and it's a disaster. I mean, this could be like a single sole proprietor owned shop. And they're just like, oh, guess I don't get paid this month because I just lost a thousand pounds on this stupid tournament. That's just terrible to me. This whole situation is terrible. So I've said it before and I'll say it again. I mean, you're getting bad attendance. You're getting bad treatment by unfair judges. You're getting people not getting banned for cheating. You're getting rampant cheating that nobody does anything about. Um, according to Travis Wu, one in three people is probably adding cards to their pools in sealed events, official sealed events at GPs. It's just awful. I, I would just advise staying away from the pro scene. I know I'm basically telling you to make this problem worse, but do you think they're going to hold another event again? Hell no. And they shouldn't. I mean, pro level is dying. Nobody has any respect for it. They don't stream it anymore. Nobody wants to watch it. Nobody cares about it. So don't run the tournaments and don't attend the tournaments. My, my advice is the same to people on both ends of it. So it's a shame, but it is what it is. So I just want to share this news. It was brought up by uh, one of my fans who sent it to me. I'm like, wow, this has to get more attention. Link to the original article in the description because for once it's actually not so easy to find. So thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next video.